Whatever the reason being, logistics, ability to draw more money elsewhere, I don't know. It's always been crazy to be that it's been over 18 years since WWE did a pay-per-view, excuse me, premium live event in Puerto Rico. It's a company with a long, deep history and love and passion for professional wrestling. Um, the company typically has a number of wrestlers with some form of Puerto Rican lineage. Non-American mainland and international crowds tend to really show up well for these things. And you clearly saw that last night, right? Like, it was fantastic environment. What an audience. What a crowd. It really made for a great viewing experience at home. And they need to go to Puerto Rico more. Because um, they were they were on fire from moment one. Like the Raw Women's Championship match. That crowd was almost psychotic in their support of EO Sky. Which was great, right? They really got behind Sky. Uh, she and Bianca didn't really try to fight it. They kind of went with it a little bit. You know, even when you did the thing with damage control, that was really well done because you established a thought process in the fans' minds that Eos Guy could actually beat Bianca, but ultimately Bailey just couldn't fucking help herself, and she got involved and cost her the damn match. And you know what? You say, this is how it should be done. It was a really good match. Right person in Theory 1 and Bianca Belair. Let her be the long guest. Women's champion in WWE history, whatever. But you made Eos Guy look even better in a loss, and you advanced a story. That's how wrestling should be done. Omos versus Seth Rollins is a match you look at and you say there doesn't really feel like there's much reason to have it. It's kind of random and it was basically treated like it was kind of random. And this match had better, it was better than it had any right to be. My only knock with this match, because I thought that the chemistry between Omos and Seth Rollins was good. They both got in their stuff in the appropriate and right way. And at times they made Omos look kind of like a powerhouse, like a giant. Um, but they either need to shit or get off the pot with him. These are getting a bit of Bray Wyatt's disease with him, and you can't do that. You can't continue to put a guy in big spots and then never have him deliver. You can't do that. Like you already had him lose to Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. You can't have him lose clean here to Seth Rollins. That's stupid. You can find other finishes. And if you don't want to pin Seth Rollins because you seem to be heading towards him being the world heavyweight champion, fine. I understand that. Like do a double, D, double DQ, a DQ, a count out. Do something other than what the hell you did. It's like Triple H went to the Tony Khan school of I don't know how to fuck, fucking book Giants worth of shit and you could do it too. Like this is dumb legitimately and does not deserve to be defended at all. Shame because the match was solid. Probably Omasa's best work he's done in WWE. Uh, the United States Championship Triple Threat match. You know, it was a solid outing but I really didn't care that much. But Bobby Lashley, you look at the dude, he's in his mid-40s but he looks and works like he's 10 or 15 years or younger. I was hoping that this would be a good spotlight for Bryce Bronson Reed. It was certainly a good opportunity for him, and I thought he made the most of it, and the crowd was into him, so that was good. I don't give a shit about Austin theories, but it's whatever. And clearly the company is. But unlike with Omas, where, you know, he's a freaking giant and they keep having him lose, this company finds a way to keep having Austin Theory win. I wonder what the difference is here. Um... I would have much rather had Austin Theory pin Bobby Lashley in the, the way this match finished. So just because Lashley's a more established guy, it doesn't hurt him losing based off of the way that match ended. Versus Bronson Reed is the guy you should be trying to establish. Having him lose here, I don't like that shit. But it was what it was. Uh, the SmackDown Women's Championship, I said, I've always had the hots for Selena Vega because she, she's sexy. She really is. And she seems to always look phenomenal. And she certainly did here. And there are plenty of guys that be like, uh, so did Rhea Ripley. Yes. And, you, and you're going to say, I didn't, I didn't think you were a milkman. Usually I'm not. But there are exceptions. Don't get it twisted. She one's of them. Okay? You know, especially if I think about her and Selena Vega touching. Like, hey, ain't nothing wrong with ladies touching ladies. Like, ladies like that stuff. And we should encourage this type of behavior. But, you know, Selena Vega with the Puerto Rican flag. Like, that looked awesome that crowd getting behind her to that level you know to the point where it's moving her to tears i usually don't like that but here it worked it was just fine understanding the emotion of the moment was fantastic like she looked really bigly even with being the tiny lady relatively speaking that she is um i am really surprised though that there was a fan talking about well you can't have zelina vega lose after after that reaction from the crowd, what, what fucking company? You've been watching all these years. 
I mean, not to mention the fact that Rhea just won the SmackDown Women's Championship at WrestleMania. You're not going to have her drop it a little over a month later. You're not going to have Mommy lose it here. And she's not going to lose it to Zelina Vega at this point, that's for sure. But you just not think that they wouldn't have the hometown wrestler lose in their hometown area. <laughs> you must not have been paying attention to Vince McMahon's company for damn years, that's for sure. Uh, but anyways, the match was pretty short, relatively speaking. It didn't need to be long. The sandal spot was freaking great, and it was something that everybody could connect to. Um, I loved it. It was good. Moving on. Then we get to the match that was the building block of this show. It was the featured event. It was the real main event. Uh, the San Juan Street fight between Damian Priest and Bad Bunny. And if you are a wrestler, you should hope to be buried like Bad Bunny was. Or excuse me, Damian Priest was here. The dude's already 40. This might be the highlight of his career. And if it was, it's a hell of a highlight to have. He's in Puerto Rico, a place where he grew up, facing off against one of the biggest music stars in the entire world in his home country, talking about Bad Bunny. Like, yeah, this, this is a big damn deal. Bury me like that if I'm a wrestler, please. This is a huge performance for Damian Priest, and I felt he delivered. It might never get better for him, and that's okay if it doesn't, because this is pretty big. He had the pressure of having to go out there and be the one to control the match. He had to make sure the match worked. He had to make sure he was able to work with Bad Bunny, protect Bad Bunny, so Bad Bunny doesn't get hurt, so Bad Bunny could come back again. Like, not easy. It's a big spot for Damian Priest to be put in. And he delivered. And Bad Bunny is the type of celebrity involvement you want to continue to have. It's clear that this guy has a passion for this. You could tell he grew up a fan. You could tell he's a fan. You could tell he loves it. He's obviously a natural performer. He's one of the biggest stars in the world, in the world of music. Like all these different reasons that you want him to be there on top of the familiarity with performing in front of a huge crowd. He's not intimidated by that. He knows how to work and tell a story and be a performer. Of course you want that type of shit on your show. The locker room, the roster, could certainly take freaking notes from Bad Bunny, that's for sure. Even if you say, well, his coordination's not always the best and some of his stuff is kind of Vince and Shane-like. Sometimes it is, but you know what? The shit also works. And man, I'll tell you, as if this wasn't enough, like the crowd wasn't already crazy for Bad Bunny. When Carlito came out, no bullshit. That's greater than some of the Austin Rock and Hogan pops I've heard throughout my lifetime. Like, this shit is one of the loudest pops I've ever heard. Crazy, man. That place exploded when Carlito came running out. Holy shit! And then a moment or two later, even though they'd already seen him earlier in the show, where they erupted, they erupted again when Savio Vega came out! Viva Savio! Viva Savio! You goddamn right! Put that Puerto Rican le wrestling legend out there. You can overbook shit sometimes and it come across so wonderfully. This was overbooked all hell. Don't get it twisted. And it absolutely worked magnificently. This was so much goddamn fun. And the right person won. You can't have Bad Bunny losing that spot. You really can't. I understand you say, oh, it makes Damian Priest look bad. And Damian Priest ain't gonna fucking care. He's doing business as he should. And the best thing for business is to put Bad Bunny over here. So maybe you give it an excuse to bring him back in a few months. And however many times they want to bring back Bad Bunny is just freaking fine with me. And my God, my only complaint about this match is that the WWE does it again. They don't understand the position that they're booking themselves into. You can't sit there with Damian Priest and Bad Bunny in Puerto Rico and know that you're going to bring out... Carlito and fucking Savio Vega and think that anything else on this car could possibly fucking follow it. Like that is not main eventing Hogan Rock at WrestleMania 18 levels of stupid. Putting HBK and Taker in the mid card of 25 fucking stupid. Like this is really damn stupid. And it matters here because card placement for matches does matter because it impacts the flow of the show. And the flow matters. And the flow was fucked up after this. Because you look at that six-man tag, it's rare to have a bloodline theme match feel kind of underwhelming. You also have Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn in it. Um, and it's like, 
the crowd is kind of into it, but you can tell they're a little spent. Like, they just freaking orgasm multiple times during the last match. Like, what do you expect here? This match would have been much better served going on be right before the San Juan Street Fight. Like, to me, the last three matches on this show should have been Cody Brock, then the six-man tag, then the street fight. You do that, this show is even more awesome, potentially, in terms of how it lands and how it comes across. Uh, they're really teasing the tension here between Solo and the Usos, but, you know, that's about the most notable thing here. I spent some time during this match because of what had just happened with uh, the street fight, you know, talking about wondering what Roman Reigns was doing right now, probably making steak with his wife at home, but it is whatever. Uh, he sure is fuck wasn't watching this, and I couldn't blame him. And then you get to the main event. I actually like that Cody Rhodes attacked Brock before the bell. I know some people are talking about they didn't like that. I actually did because that felt like a natural reaction that you would expect a guy to have. So I'm not going to knock that. I actually like that. That felt natural. That felt real. And that stayed away from kind of the traditional, both guys come out, make their entrance, then we got to hold it, and, uh, fuck it. Sometimes you just got to get in there and you go. Uh, but the turnbuckle crap, I didn't like that. Brock getting busted open apparently the hard way. Didn't really like that because the match dynamics are off here because you should have, if anything, had the Cody, had Cody be the one that's bleeding. So the dynamics are off. It came across in a way, when you look at the entirety of the package in the match and even the finish in terms of how Cody won, and it feels like Cody won as the cowardly chicken shit heel, especially when he ran away immediately afterwards, which ironically I say, you book him to his natural aptitudes and strength. He is not a very likable guy. The more you get to know him, he is a natural fucking heel. That's where you can make the most money with Cody Rhodes, not as a baby face. You'll say right now, well, the crowd really goes, whoa! Yeah, and then what? Exactly. The finish was anticlimactic, a bit of a wet fart. Um, granted, if you come back and do another match, it works, it makes sense. I'm just saying in that moment, it felt, it fell flat. It was a dud. And again, if this was how you knew you were going to end this show, end this main event match, this match did not sneeze to be in the main event. I'm just saying. But overall, even with the WWE kind of fumble in the bag a little bit in terms of the match placement towards the end of the night, this show was still a hell of a lot of fun. You know, I could nitpick some other things, but damn, it's nice just to be able to sit down and watch a wrestling show and have some fun doing so, like t last night did, because that was a hell of a lot of fun.